Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2017 release, Todd and the Book of Pure Evil, The End of the End. It is an animated film. It's about an hour and 20 minutes long. And it's the follow-up to the one and two seasons of Todd and the Book of Pure Evil TV show, which unfortunately just recently left the Shutter streaming service. Um, I'm putting this out without spoilers just because... I put up the show review without spoilers because that's how I do all show reviews. So in the interest of maintaining the integrity of the story and not telling anything about it since I didn't do that in the show review, I'm not going to do that in this one. Just kind of give you an idea of, you know, if you do watch the series, which I would highly recommend seasons one and two, is it worth watching this film then as a follow-up? And I would say, simply put, yes. I would say it's worth it mainly because they had had plot kind of scripted out or just ideaed out for, that's not even a word, a term, but um, kind of plotted out for a seasons three and four, which obviously never ended up happening. So it's just great to have everything wrapped up in the end and know where they were trying to take the story. Because at the end of season two, there definitely is a very interesting cliffhanger because it is a show that, it's mainly about the comedy and, and how funny it is for me personally, because I love how funny the show is. It's, it's a wonderful horror comedy, but you may also be interested in the underlying story and getting everything kind of wrapped up with that. And that's what the animated film does. That was the reason for the animated film to be done. So I would recommend that just to see where they were trying to go. That said, it's not as good as seasons one and two, uh, but it's worth seeing. This is directed by Richard Duhaney, who also directed Teleporting Fat Guy and Hatchimals. Yes, a show called Hatchimals, an animated show. And Craig David Wallace was also involved in it. He also directed Pointy Teeth for Pointy People, and one that's coming up is called Motherly. So I don't, I haven't seen those, don't know anything about them. It was written by Wallace as well as Charles Pico, who both were involved in the writings for seasons one and two. That makes sense. Uh, they did bring all the important characters back to do the voicing for the animated series, which is key because these are all voices that you're very much used to from seasons one and two. They didn't have to really change any of the characters, so they're very much the same. The lines are delivered for the most part the same. But I will say that one of the things that kind of sucks is having seen it in real life, like at the actual actors interacting with each other, on screen, it's very different to go then to an animated situation because you're missing a lot of the facial expressions that you're used to from those characters. And for that reason, the acting's not as good because a lot of delivery with that show had a lot to do with the facial expressions. And those aren't really put into the animation because of the style of animation it is. It's not, it's kind of a kind of simplistic animation style. It doesn't get super, super detailed where it's showing like a ton of facial expressions. So that kind of sucks because you really miss that facial acting and some of the physical acting actually too. Um, and it, it just makes you feel kind of detached. Like the whole time I was watching it, I was thinking, yeah, this is fine. And it's the same voice and everything, but it doesn't feel the same. I'm not feeling that same connection. It, it's like putting kind of a wall up between me and the material that I felt like wasn't there for the first two seasons of the show. So maybe that's just me, but that that's how I felt about it. Um, it was mainly funded by an Indiegogo campaign, apparently. Uh, apparently they needed to come up with a little bit extra money after that, after the fact, but mainly Indiegogo paid for it. Uh, the animated film idea to wrap everything up was actually inspired by Jason Mew's the uh, animated film he did, Jay and Silent Bob's gr Super Groovy Cartoon Movie, which apparently only cost $150,000 to make and ended up turning a profit. Now, it was inspired by that because obviously Jason Mewes is a, plays a character in the show, Jimmy the Janitor, which something big happens with Jimmy in the animated series, uh, so he's not really a janitor anymore. That's not really a spoiler, but um, I did like that aspect of it. They give a good recap in the beginning of the film that's narrated by Jason Mewes to kind of get people caught up. So honestly, you could just watch this movie without having seen the show if you really want to because all the most pertinent information for the story they're telling is 
given to you up front. But I would say just watch seasons one and two because there's a lot of callback jokes that show up and also other references just like main story-wise that show up in the animated movie that you don't get otherwise if you haven't seen seasons one and two. So highly recommend that. Uh, but if you really wanted to, you could still watch just watch the movie and know what's going on. Uh, there are a lot of Easter eggs in the beginning animated montage. So if you've watched seasons one and two, look out for those when the opening montage is happening with the narration. So many Easter eggs. And there are more Easter eggs that end up showing up, obviously, as the show goes on or the movie goes on. I wasn't a big fan of the animation style. I already talked about, you know, not being able to um, show facial expressions all that well. It's also just in general an animation style that's... Not, just not my favorite. It's it's a little too simplistic. It felt kind of rigid at times too. Like the the bodies needed a little better movement potentially, but not bad. It's not it's not bad animation by any stretch. It's just not my favorite. Uh, they do musical portions of it because just like with seasons one and two of the show, for each of those seasons they had a musical episode. So they do have some musical pieces that end up showing up in the film. So it's kind of cool that they have that kind of callback to the show. And the songs are good, too, especially the end song. The song at the very end of the of the film that kind of wraps everything up, I think, is really catchy and good. They cover a lot of story while also making it feel like it's kind of several episodes of the show kind of shoved together. They have a way that they do the show where each episode is kind of like one main person ends up getting the Book of Pure Evil and something happens with that person. So they have a few of those things injected into the movie. So for that reason, it still feels like it's a few episodes of the show kind of jammed together. But the amount of story they cover is way more than they typically did in the show episodes because you just get like a piece here and there throughout each season of the show. They were going kind of slow, obviously, because if they were able to get more seasons. But with this, it moves a little bit fat, well, a lot faster, because they're trying to, you know, shore up the story, give everyone the end of it. Ultimately, it is not actually as funny as the show, but it is a pretty solid follow-up. I will say, if you loved the show, You'll still like the animated movie, but I don't think you'll love it the way you liked seasons one and two of the show, unfortunately. Um, but it's worth seeing. It's definitely worth seeing, especially, like I was saying, just to see where they were going with this whole thing, because it's an interesting story. Um, and the ending is solid, and the final song is great. I really enjoyed the final song, but yeah, I, I like the way they leave it, and uh, it kind of does open it up that if they really wanted to come back, if that was an option at some point, they kind of could. And, you know, fingers crossed, I would love for that to happen. I don't know if there's any, you know, talk of that online or anything. I didn't look for that, unfortunately, but uh, I would love some more Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. Even if they just did another animated movie, I'd be fine with that just because I love the material. I love their sense of humor. Their mixture of horror and comedy is so good. So, yeah, that's my feeling on it. Would love to hear your thoughts if you've seen this. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. Also, you can do spoilers in the comments. That's fine. Just go ahead. Uh, also, do me a quick favor if you can. And you can. Because this takes no time. It costs you no money. And it helps me out a lot. Subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, big thank you. Thank you very much. It really does help keep me motivated. The reason I started this channel in the first place was to connect with other super nerdy horror fans because where I live I really don't have anyone I can really get this nerdy with about horror so I saw the internet as kind of an outlet to do this thing and that's why I created this channel so this is my way to kind of reach out to people start conversations that's why I always ask for people to put comments down there so we can have a back and forth and talk about you know what we like to get nerdy about this stuff so I appreciate that but if you subscribe, that'd be great. You're just kind of joining this nerdy horror community I'm trying to build, and it also really does motivate me to keep this stuff going because it, you know, I know that someone's actually consuming it and reading it and interacting, or not reading it, watching it and interacting with me. So it means a lot. But anyway, I really thank you for taking your time to watch this regardless. And until next time, keep it brutal.